BC, people, what's going on? It's a love supreme we're talking about. How are you all doing? So, turns out that people at Record Collector actually watch, watch my videos. That's nice. That's nice, you know. Um, just got a little little message from one of the main guys from the magazine about my last video. I love it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'm still chuffed. You know what I'm saying? It's a little thing, but it's just very surreal to open up one of my favorite magazines. You know, literally, this is one of my favorite magazines that I look forward to reading, and there I am in it, you know. <laughs> it's the bomb. <clears throat> Um, folks are paying attention. The article seems to be helping um, people remember or find out about me. Some orders for flyover on vinyl are rolling in, thank goodness. Until I run out of these, every flyover vinyl um, order gets a free CD of the music. And the uh, album of the CD also includes an extra track that didn't make it onto the vinyl. One that I really wanted on the vinyl, but ran out of time. So, thank you for the orders, and um, these are available till they're gone. I don't have a lot of them, but um, my car is running in, so I um, made it a trip to one of my favorite places, the record store. And I did make two purchases. You know, I have to, again, I won't belabor it. But you know where I'm at. It. Money is tight for so many people. They didn't have anything that was blowing. I said, oh, I gotta, gotta have this. But they had some things of interest to me. I picked up, not picked up, but the resurgence of vinyl, and maybe not the resurgence of vinyl, maybe it's always been this way, but finding old music to re-release, looking for undiscovered gems, that really seems to be a big part of what's going on with vinyl these days. And so I'm paying attention when certain small labels uh, release something I've never heard of and they kind of talk it up. One of those labels that I find um, Reliable is Sol Resol. I just picked up my second reissue from the label. Sidney Miller, Linguas de Pogo. I had never heard of this particular album that I know of. Sidney Miller, again, a name that you wouldn't associate with Brazil, but um, this is a hard to find um, Brazilian release. Just now seeing its first repressing on vinyl this year. And this is beautiful. It's, now this is what I like about the Brazilian um, uh, Tropicalia thing, which is it's this interesting mixture. Number one, it's very, very melodic and um, a lot of melancholy in Brazilian music. A lot of, so, how do you say the word? Saudade, saudade. I can't say it too well. This feeling, you know, which I just love. So that's on here. But the messing with sound, fuzz guitars, the mixing up of the um, electric psychedelic feel coming off of the 60s in the early 70s that's on this album. This is wonderful. Um, I, can't, I won't play it because the copyright police are paying attention and they really, they really want to put that hammer down. They, wanna, they really want to control us. This is what I have to say to them. Look this up, Linguas de Fogo by Sidney Miller. This is Foyo, Fogo, Foyo, uh, whatever it says. Beautiful album. Beautiful. I haven't paid any attention to the lyrics. They're in uh, Portuguese. I'm sure there's some really wonderful things being said on here. The other album I took a chance on, which <clears throat> will take, I think it's going to take me. Um, longer to get into, but I can already tell this is was worth it, is another album that 
sat unnoticed for ages and now it's being reissued. Bruce and Vladi, The Reality. Black musician um, ends up over in Sweden uh, trying to make it. One thing or another leads to this session. They get a, sh uh, a short, useless recording contract and make the record. Don't make a cent. The record company goes out of business. Nothing else is heard from until now. In the blurb, they, re they compare this to Hanson Carlson. If you know Bo Hanson, he and this drummer, I forget his first name, um, were a duo. And they have some cool records I'd like to get. I don't have any of them on vinyl. Um, it's, a, it's a fair comparison. Now this one I think people are going to actually like more. And one of the reasons is because of the sloppy drumming. Um, seems like... Um, it, it really became popular through hip-hop in particular to have wonky beats, that the beat is not real straight, that it's kind of fucked up. And this drummer, although he's good, he's kind of, this music in parts is pushing his um, abilities, and so his bass drum foot, he doesn't always have control of it. Okay, that's what I hear, that's what I notice. If anything, it gives an edge to this. The other thing I like about this is the cosmic um, aspect to the vocals and what Bruce is talking about when he sings. Very much in my head space, head, head space. You know what I'm saying? Life has meaning. You're thinking about it. Things are connected. He talks about it. The reality. Actually, I highly remember. What am I saying? I highly recommend this. And... I highly recommend this, Bruce and Vladdy, The Reality. Um, it's nice that um, enough money is being made that the resurgence of vinyl is in the mainstream. As you know, nothing is in the mainstream if it's not making money or if it's not to the advantage of some rich persons. And so we're hearing about vinyl, so it's obviously making money. That's good. The good part for, for we record collectors is um, good music that's been lying dormant is resurfacing. I like that. Okay. Got some records here I've been listening to to share, and I will. I feel compelled to share the thought that I read the comments, I don't read the messages too much. And the reason is because in the, my messages se section, Almost every other message is someone asking me to go watch their channel, listen to their music. This also happens on Facebook. I want to reiterate, I've said this before in, the, in a video or two, but generally speaking, I'm not interested in becoming a digital reviewer. I did a little bit in the past, and what happens is just like anything, um, something is discovered and then everyone flocks to it. I don't want to be preoccupied with listening to digital tracks. I do it when I feel like it, because I like to discover music. But what is fun is playing records, CDs, and interacting with the product. So people that want me to review them, it's, you know, you, I really want something physical. You know, I, the request to listen to this, listen to this, you know, I think that you'll really get something out of this. I may, you know. But I reserve the right to not listen, you know, to not bother with it, you know, because I get a lot of these requests. And um, I'll say it again, mostly I don't look at my message board because it's just chuck full of listen, 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 look at this, look at this, look at this. Okay. I know that upset some people. And what can I do? That's my choice. That's what I want to do. I don't want to sit here and, re and review digital files. I don't. If something really blows me away, I will. Okay, some other records sitting out. Because that's the main thing I want to talk about is records. Um, I may do something social at the end here. Modern English's first album, Mesh and Lace. This is my second copy. I used to own an original on 4AD. I'm not sure what I did with it. I met the band Modern English. Son of a gun, I... 
the mod my original copy on 4AD was gone so long that this is the one I had when I met the band, signed by Modern English. When I saw them, when they first came to America, before Melt With You blew up, it was just about to blow up when they were on tour, and I met them and interviewed them for a, a, a fanzine. This album is raw, edgy, fantastic. One of the best records on the label 4AD, in my opinion. <clears throat> From the beginning to the end, this album is incredibly edgy and just excellent. If you heard it, you know what I'm talking about. Pulled this and listened to side one last night. I was pulling it mainly because on Facebook in one of the prog groups, the focus this week, some of the groups they'd like to have a theme. So this week in the prog group is Pink Floyd stuff. So I pulled Division Bell. And you know, there's been controversy about this album because of how they bootleg this stuff. But this is an original U.S. release bought in 1994. This is not a boot. This is straight legit on blue vinyl. No boot, baby. This is real. And I finally got to see Pink Floyd on this tour. I have known about Pink Floyd since um, Candy in a Current Bun and um, Arnold Lane, Sid Barrett. That's the first Pink Floyd I heard back in the 60s. I heard them in the 60s as a child. I was smitten immediately by the fanciful, fanciful nature of the music. But I loved them all the way through. And by, when I saw this tour, I was mesmerized and captivated by this album for weeks. I could hardly play anything else, especially after seeing it live. The impact of them doing it live was heavy. This a, and this is not a happy album. This is a sad, morose album. It's deep. It's deep. I'm interested in the David Gilmore because my money is tight, I have no intention of buying it. It's not something I would buy if I had a lot of money. You know, it would be like at the end of a line of records I would buy. I will, I've heard it, but I have no interest in buying it. D DJ Food and Amorphous Androgynous. This is a 12-inch single remix that they did. It's really, really excellent. Just two, two, two songs. Um... The Electric Hoax, and it's on a splattered vinyl. Even if it wasn't on this uh, collectible vinyl, I recommend this. This is just really good. Amorphous Androgynous is another name for the people in Future Sound of London. Um, great manipulators of samples. They just really are able to whip up a very interesting mix of sounds. This is very good. Another band that I love and you don't hear much about, um, Super Furry Animals, especially this album, Dark Days, Light Years. Excuse me. Love this album and the artwork. This artwork is badass. But this band, Gruff Riss, these guys are just great. And the way they record this, the music is wonderful too love that psychedelic artwork love that artwork but this is a great man really good it's pop music what's I think that um, hmm the Beatles came to mind but I don't know if that's really a good good way I just super, super furry animals if you don't know this band find out I mean look at this cover okay if that doesn't interest you, then then it, it, it won't. The only other things that are sitting out is the Max Eastley I just bought. This is really quite intense, quite wonderful. It's not easy listening, you know, and that's what I like about it. It's educational. It really is. It's educational. This is incredible. Also sitting out, because I was talking about the Pink Floyd, is I have this 7-inch High Hopes that came out in 94. And this is the um, collectible version um, on clear vinyl. Pink Floyd uh, single on clear vinyl. It also has a poster, which I generally don't, you know, I put up a poster and leave it up for a long time. 
you know, that blow-up of the magazine cover with me on it, some folks might think that's odd, but to me it's a great honor to be on a magazine cover, and there it is on my wall. It's not weird to me at all. It's an honor. Yeah, I'm sharing it with you. I know you see it every time I make a video. That's why it's there, partially why it's there. But this also has this nice poster that comes with it. Isn't that cool? Very cool. So I was just talking about that stuff. So along those lines, something that um, I keep um, kind of re-looking at and understanding more clearly all the time is the fact that I say the, I say it this way: the fact that we live in the world according to our perceptions, and it is flabbergasting how that is not more obvious, and how people can continually get upset caught up, freaked out, just because of something else someone does or says or so says or does. And I just keep looking at the reality of the fact that each person is operating according to the reality that they see in, in, in their experience, which is processed primarily through the brain, the central nervous system. It's not possible that we can all process and experience reality the same way. And yet this is it seems like it's so obvious to me and yet it's not dealt with you know we just get so upset because someone is thinking something different from us um and i just keep reminding myself of this information because it really helps me to have um better days less conflict we see something one person says it's red i say it's blue there it is. If I could change their mind, what did I really accomplish? Nothing. Because here's the thing that really um, just put it together for me. So say I have some visitors, some people come to my house who have never been here before. Maybe it's a friend and he's, he's brought a friend, okay? And this new person comes into my house and sees something about the way I live that he doesn't agree with. And he starts going, well, you should do this, and that should be like this, and that should be like that, and over on my side of the street, we do it like this. Well, that's nice information. I might take it, I may not. But what I keep remembering is this. This person's viewpoint, I only have to deal with it while I'm dealing with him. I don't really care it's like, if, he, if this person thinks that my house should be different, well, that's fine, that's what you think. When you leave my house, your thoughts go with you, and I'm done with your perspective, and I'm back to what I'm doing. It's like that all the time. We could be sitting next to each other on a bus or a subway or in a car, and if we never speak to each other, everything's fine. We start talking, sharing opinions, and then a whole world appears because of our thoughts being shared. But it's interesting that people don't seem to remember, oh, we're just sharing our thoughts. People kill each other just because of something someone said. You know, I think that's, I just, man, I think that's just really short-sighted and, and stupid, you know? I, man, it, why is it so hard to kind of pull it together and say, oh, I'm just having a conversation. Oh, this person is just sharing their viewpoint with me. They don't think what I think. They don't believe what I believe. Why is it a big deal? I say it's not. I say that um, we gag on gnats while swallowing camels. Something I heard as a small child, which is people don't make no sense, you know, uh, especially people in power and with money. They're just doing what they want. They're not doing the right thing. They're not doing sensible things. They're just operating on what their perception tells them, what they want, what they see. So I just put that out there because I try to use it in this information to help me get along with people, you know, because this world is just crazy right now. And I do like staying at home because when I go out and into the world, I see it, feel it, and deal with all the stress, the tension, and how things are just constantly, barely running, staying together. 
I hate driving in traffic. So much tension and stress in traffic. People drive really badly. In stores, some of the behavior you see, the way people dress, um, the way they talk, you know. It's why I say what I say. The politicians are constantly talking about progress and what they've done, but it's really, all they're doing is just trying to feather their bed. They keep telling us things are getting better when things are really have not gotten better. Things continue to um, deteriorate and positive change is just too slow. So, I don't know, I just want to share those thoughts. And like I say, I just keep it on the front burner, the fact that each one of us is like, inside of our head, it's like being in a car. The operator is inside behind, you know what I'm saying? We're not this body, our spirit is not this body, you know? And we're just fooled. Most people just, <laughs> We fight and fight and argue and have some of the most inane thoughts that we kill each other over, over, not really that realizing they're just thoughts. How is it that this is not more um, universally usable and clear? You know, when I encounter people who have ways of thinking and doing that just don't make sense to me, I just get the fuck away from them. And I've had a couple of folks leave me comments as though I should be concerned about using curse words. I understand that there's integrity in words, but you know, I have a lot of frustration and anger, you know, justifiably so. And so when an F-bomb comes out every now and then, just fucking deal with it, you know what I'm saying? It's reality, you know? Okay, I think that's enough for today. Be well, everyone.